This is a brief review summary of the current state of bioterrorist attack surveillance and preparedness in the US, submitted as an invited review to the Journal of Risk Management and Healthcare Policy in 2014. When we talk about bioterrorism agents, we usually refer to category A through C bioterrorism agents as classified by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Within category A are the most significant and potentially harmful agents that are classified according to their easy dissemination or transmission from person to person. They are usually associated with a high mortality rate and potential for causing major public health impact based on their high risk for causing potential harm to the public, they require special action in terms of public health preparedness. Within the category A agents, we will find anthrax, uh, the plague, botulism, tularemia, smallpox, and viral hemorrhagic fevers. Most recently, within 2014, a significant outbreak of Ebola in West Africa has focused our attention on the significant impact that these bioterrorism agents can have on the community and even on the whole world or countries within a certain region that are significantly affected by these agents. The pillars of a bioterrorism response in regards to a potential bioterrorism threat can be categorized into three broad categories which are all explored in the review. The first one is risk assessment, which includes monitoring and surveillance. Uh, monitoring here refers to the potential production, possible dissemination. The most common and most risk associated pathway of dissemination would be through the air. Uh, both water and food have certain limitations in terms of monitoring as well as a potential um, impact on a larger population. Surveillance is ongoing. Uh, detection and access limitations here um, are affected by it, uh, especially in more densely populated urban areas. Surveillance is taking a precedence and we are now advancing in our understanding of using technologies such as biosensors to survey and to monitor the potential for the dissemination of some of these bioterrorism agents. The second pillar in regards to a bioterrorism threat is risk management. Uh, very important is preparedness and in recent years, ever since the anthrax attacks on the United States in uh, 2001, um, there has been an increase in funding, um, especially uh, in, in regards to response and stockpiling. Um, the strategic national stockpile in the United States has significantly increased and the response time has decreased. Prevention is another element of risk management. A pre and post exposure prophylaxis, what medical countermeasures do we have currently available uh, that can help us to prevent further spread of a potential uh, bioterrorist agent? And decontamination. Uh, although many of uh, the agents that are in uh, risk category A, according to the CDC, uh, are not necessarily uh, very viable in the environment, uh, anthrax spores are an exception which can remain stable and viable in the environment for months and even years after the initial dissemination. The third pillar of uh, uh, the risk approach is risk communication. And here, public health policies uh, establishing emergency plans has been uh, crucial uh, to establishing a national response uh, that reaches across different agencies um, and uh, specifically is designed uh, to uh, potentially prevent and respond to a mass dissemination event where larger populations are affected. Resource availability, resource allocations are central uh, to uh, the risk communication and the risk response, uh, the appropriate response uh, to a bioterrorism attack. Uh, as I mentioned before, medical countermeasures, pre and post exposure prophylaxis and vaccines are important. 
underlying all of these is research. In all of these areas, we need to look at what can we further do to advance our understanding of risk assessment, risk management, risk communication, what new pre and post exposure prophylaxis measurements uh, can we uh, utilize and implement as fast as possible that is readily available uh, not only through the strategic national stockpile but within each community uh, to help uh, prevent further dissemination and exposure to uh, the uh, bioterrorism threat agent. What has become clear over the years uh, since 2001 is uh, that uh, in response to a bioterrorism uh, attack uh, to the dissemination of a biological agent, uh, there has to be an interagency response. On the federal level, it is mainly the involvement of the Department of Homeland Security, the Federal Emergency Management Agency, as well as the Department of Health and Human Services and the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Going from there, each state has established its own routine procedures, its own um, departments and uh, strategic plans to respond to it. Uh, the Department of Public Safety and Public Health often have specific divisions uh, that then have specific uh, state homeland security strategies and state emergency management plans in place. This is then further communicated down on the regional level uh, where uh, planning organizations uh, require often regional emergency disaster plans and regional public health preparedness plans and we have a hospital preparedness uh, plan in place for most uh, of the communities within the United States now. Uh, hospitals and healthcare continuum obviously uh, as soon as a biological agent dissemination occurs and it has been detected a response should be communicated uh, both uh, downstream to the local level as well as upstream to the state and federal level to initiate a response as fast as possible and obviously from the regional level we go further down uh, to uh, the local level municipalities and tribes are affected uh, a local emergency operations plan should be in place. Um, local health districts and departments should be informed and communicate. Um, in most states or on the regional level there's a smallpox vaccination plan which can be initiated relatively quickly. Uh, other vaccinations might become necessary here. Uh, communication is very important between all of these elements, between all of these different agencies. Uh, local public health emergency operations plan which then all translates down to the local bioterrorism response plan. And in most cases, this will be considered an all hazards response, um, really going out um, and trying to prevent any further spread of um, the potential agent that has been disseminated. Thank you for listening to this brief video of the uh, review article, and I look forward to hearing your responses uh, and uh, invite you to read the full article.